Hey there everyone and welcome back to The Disconnected. Today I'm going to have one of my boutique Blu-ray movie review roundups that I do. Uh, these are going to be short reviews for each of these movies, the releases. I'm going to go over some quick thoughts and I'm going to try to bang through a whole bunch of them, probably around 10 or so, and uh, just get these out of the way. These are mostly going to be what I watched in the month of August that I wanted to highlight. Uh, some good, some not so good, some very middle of the road. But that being said, let's get started. All right, we're going to start with one from Unearthed Films. This is one by Ryan Nicholson called Hanger. Hanger is a very dirty movie, and I'm going to go kind of some themes here today. The first few I'm going to talk about are what I would call dirty movies. This is dirty in a not great way. Um, I'm generally not scared of or uh, disturbed by extreme horror, so that aspect of this didn't push me away necessarily. But this is just a bad movie. Um, I've liked some of Ryan Nicholson's other things, but this just overall was not good. It was not very entertaining. It was mostly just gross out horror and that is effective sometimes, was not effective in this one. Uh, some really interesting things like Lloyd Kaufman playing a trans person and uh, the, the depths that they're willing to go to for this movie. Um, just to throw it out there, if you're not a fan of extreme horror, the type of thing you'll see in this one is a uh, Somebody penetrating somebody's colostomy port. Sounds disgusting to even say it like that, but uh, yeah. Hanger is not very good. The next one I would describe as sort of dirty is the release of Angst from Cult Epics. This one, compared to the last one we talked about, this one is good. This is a really well-made movie. Uh, this is based off of a true story of a person that got released from prison and went out and basically murdered, uh, tortured a family that night that he was released. Um, really well acted, that was the best thing about this, is it felt, uh, if, if that's even a great thing to say, it felt very natural for the person to um, behave the way they were behaving. Uh, it felt very primal, in a way, and instinctual for this person to come out and treat this family with such disdain. Really well done. Uh, the only thing that I would fault this movie for is I sort of wanted more at the end, but, you know, basing this off of a true story, I get why there wasn't a whole lot more. The end of this just made me feel like I honestly could have used another 15-20 minutes. Uh, something else that actually drove the plot a little further home. Um, however, this release from Cult Epics looks great, sounds great, uh, a lot of really good special features. There are some interviews with the cinematographer and the director on this. There's also an introduction from Gaspar Noe. So, Cult Epics, Angst, I would certainly look at picking this one up if that's your style of movie. Another thing that people will call dirty as a whole is the body horror genre, and I recently revisited one from the master of that genre, and that of course is David Cronenberg, and this last week I rewatched Videodrome. It's been quite some time, and to be honest, this may have jumped up to Cronenberg's number one movie for me. It certainly was The Fly, but you know, just seeing everything he's able to accomplish in this movie, and the social commentary, and really the prescient way that he's able to identify the trends that we see today in social media that a lot of us are guilty of on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, essentially, the idea of trolling that we see constantly that we could not even truly comprehend we would be seeing, he was coming up with and warning us about it decades prior it would ever become a thing. Um, this is one that is really well shot. The prosthetics that they use in this movie the practical effects with those prosthetics look incredible. Uh, my wife fell asleep while watching this and woke up during the scene where the gun is basically morphing into this person's hand and uh, woke up very momentarily and went, what the fuck? And then went right back to sleep. Obviously a perfect scene if that's gonna make that happen. Um, if you've never seen Videodrome, highly recommend it. This limited edition release from Arrow is amazing but very, very out of print. Uh, if you're in the US, Criterion put out Videodrome. It's 20 bucks on sale when it goes on sale. I would certainly suggest it if you've never seen it. Most people have, but if not, Videodrome is incredible. Okay, the next grouping theme that I will talk about is uh, fantastical, I guess. The first one I'm gonna talk on is Scream Factory's release of Brotherhood of the Wolf. Uh, the first thing is that the closed captions in this are trash. 
Uh, they are doing a replacement disc program for this because the captions are so bad. Um, it is very clearly not the words that are being said, not to mention it's not even full complete sentences sometimes. They don't even make sense. Pretty bad. But when you watch it with this, you get the gist of the movie. I had honestly never seen this before. I had heard about it. I had seen some of the art from it, but it's overall pretty good. This movie is from 2002 when the CGI was really bad but for some reason it was prolific, it was everywhere. There are some scenes in, the, in this movie where the monster is done practically. Uh, you don't see the entire thing, but you see like from the shoulders up, and it's really good looking. It, it looks great, it's actually genuinely creepy, but then there are other scenes where it's done with CGI, and it's awful, like god awful. Um, the CGI in this, when they showed from afar the monster, looks real bad. Um, this is one, though, if you've never seen it, I would highly recommend it. It is a weird mix of genres. It's like a period piece, horror, romantic, dramedy, uh, monster movie that, that also has martial arts scenes. Uh, yeah, that, it doesn't sound very enticing when you say it like that, but it's true. This is a weird mix of genres, but it's entertaining as hell. Um, there are a lot of problems with it but the good things that they do certainly outweigh the bad it's not an incredible movie but i i mean i think i gave it a four on letterboxd it's pretty fun then the next one took the entire world by storm over the last couple of years and i just haven't been able to watch it until now i actually went to the movie theater to try to see this in a small boutique theater and i'd had a really awful day a really hard day and i saw like the first eight minutes and then literally crashed because it was the most comfortable I had been in a few days and woke up for the end credits. Uh, that rarely ever happens to me. I had just, I basically died that day. Don't know where that came from, but uh, that is Psycho Goreman. Now this movie, especially compared to Brotherhood of the Wolf, this is a goddamn masterpiece. Uh, the prosthetics on this look incredible. The costume work that they do, there's tons of practical effects. Uh, there's lots of CGI, but because it's newer, it's a lot better than it was in 2002. Uh, the story in this is incredible. I've seen this described as a horror Power Rangers, and I get the comparison, but it's very different than that also. Uh, the acting in this is surprisingly good. There's a child actor. She's uh, very young, probably like 11 or 12. She steals the movie. She is great in every single one of her scenes. Um, I've not heard anything about a sequel for this, but I sincerely hope there is one. Uh, this is a movie that is essentially, it's like an alien invader movie where the whole, the whole earth is hanging in the balance of a decision or a fight or something like that that we've seen a few times. And overall, it's hilarious. Uh, again, super well acted, and the story is genuinely relatable, even though it's not at all believable in the way that they show it. Um, but this release from, uh, this is from Raven Banner in Canada. This is great. Um, I believe this limited edition release has been long sold out, but uh, Shudder put this out on RLJE in the US. There's a Beyond Genres release coming from Umbrella. This one is wide released out there. So many different places you can get this from. If you haven't put the time in, Psycho Goreman is worth your time. Then the next one isn't really a theme that I'll talk about, but it is more of a group of movies, and I'm going to go with Vinegar Syndrome. And the first one I want to talk about is their release of Death Promise. Uh, Death Promise is listed as a genre-blending grindhouse classic that perfectly embodies the mid-70s New York City lensed exploitation film aesthetic, and it really does. It comes across as a martial arts revenge uh, drama thriller, basically and you'll see all of the great tropes from those types of movies in this movie. Really well acted, fun story. Um, it's, it's a lot of cheesiness all baked in, but it's, it's good. It's certainly entertaining, and uh, the best thing about this has an incredible theme song. Super catchy, will get stuck in your head all day long. Death Promise, highly recommended. And then, not Vinegar Syndrome themselves, but one of their partner labels, Subculture, put out this movie Deadlock. This one came out in 4K UHD. This is a weird uh, spaghetti western-esque movie. This is actually a German film and it is it is one that I recommend for some uniqueness, 
but it's also not an incredible film. It's really well shot, very beautiful to look at, and it has a few scenes that are great. Uh, it's, it's worth it mainly for the third act. The third act is really good, really good shootout, a um, lot of tension that builds up in the final act, but the second act is really long and drawn out. This movie is only 93 minutes long, and honestly, if you would have asked me the night I watched this, I would have thought the second act alone was 93 minutes. So I give this like a trepidatious recommend. If you are a big fan of the Western genre, you'll probably like Deadlock. It's really well done. Um, it's also more of a modern Western. There's lots of, as you can see, uh, guns that are more modern guns. It's a very interesting story, at least. And uh, the three main characters in this movie are named Dump, The Kid, and Mr. Sunshine. So if you can look past that, it's certainly worth being entertained by it. And then speaking of different companies, my last one that I'm going to talk about tonight is Severin Films. Severin, as I've said many times this year, are absolutely killing 2021. By far their best year ever. Like, not even on the same scale. If, if this is what they are moving forward, Severin has entered the new arena of top-tier amazingness as far as releases. They still have a lot to work on on the back end and uh, missing some deadlines and websites going down and sales being less than stellar. However, their releases are beyond worth it. So the big one that has been hyped this year that I'm gonna talk about first is Blood for Dracula. This one is the Paul Morrissey film. This one is in 4K, came in this really nice digipack. This movie, first of all, the 4K on this is great. Really warm transfer, gives this very gothic feel that looks incredible. It gives everything this very tangible, real feeling. And the big thing about this is uh, Udo Kier's performance in this is astounding. Like, he is, first of all, so thin and small compared to, like, the, the Udo that you see nowadays in the last couple decades. Um, the amount of odd, like, Morrissey touches that are in this, like, all of a sudden he'll cross his eyes or uh, the bathtub scene, the infamous bathtub scene that people that have seen this know. Um, the, the amount of gurgling that he does as he's vomiting up this human, non-virginal blood. Um, the movie itself is pretty good. It's not, it's not a masterpiece or anything like that. I'm super glad to have it, but overall, really great packaging, lots to this. Uh, the 4K on this is incredible, like I said. However, I've not watched the Blu-ray feature of this, but I've heard that the Blu-ray feature looks nowhere near as good as the 4K. So a little warning there. Uh, I would suggest watching this in 4K rather than the Blu-ray for sure. Um, all the special features are really well done on here. There's a lot of them. They've got the cast and crew and a whole bunch of other people involved. Not to mention this also has a CD soundtrack really well put together package from Severin as usual. And then I am late to the party on the next one, but I finally watched Severin's V. I also watched this the week before they announced their big folk horror box set that is coming out this winter at some point. Uh, they said December, we'll see when it actually gets delivered. V is a Russian sort of gothic horror film that is, uh, it's, it's kind of odd to be marketed as a folk horror like they were doing in that box set. However, really interesting film from 1967. This movie is only 77 minutes long and it has this really well thought out storyline for the first about uh, 60 minutes of it. And the last 17 minutes take it from a, a pretty good movie, really well made, uh, very artistic and uh, with, with the low budget that they were working on, frankly miraculous presentation that they were able to pull off but those last 17 minutes make this movie astounding uh, suddenly there's a switch that gets flipped that you are in this brand new world of creepiness and just really like where did this come from with what they were setting up with the rest of the movie it is out of nowhere and it takes this just to that next level that you always want a movie to go to uh, Severin has this out on their standard Blu-ray now. It does not anymore come with the slipcover. If you were looking for it, Eureka has also put it out in the UK. Here is that one. Um, this one also does not come out with the slipcover anymore. This comes with a standard release. However, there is all kinds of special features on here. If you can find it, I would suggest that. But V, if you are buying that box set, 
put priority on V if you've never seen it. A legitimately incredible movie. Okay, and now for my big winner. I'm gonna say this may be Severn's best movie they've ever put out, and that is the movie Siege. Siege is an incredible movie about a group of uh, right-wing, far-right-wing uh, extremists that go to this gay club just to cause some trouble, and they literally just start murdering people. And one of them gets away from this club. And it's not really spoiling anything that happens in the first couple of minutes and is the basis of the entire movie. But this person gets away and runs and barricades himself in this apartment building. And then suddenly there is the standoff with this group that is trying to clean up their mess from all these people that they killed. And one got away and he's a witness. And it is just this incredible story of survival and protection that very much rings true of like Assault on Precinct 13 and one of my favorites from the last few years, VFW. Uh, this would make a great double feature with either of those or a really bonkers triple feature if you just did all three. But it is extremely well acted, the story is engaging, and similarly to V, this is one of those movies that's really good, works really great, and then there is one scene right at the end credits that takes it from like a four, almost four and a half, to this four and a half or five star movie, because it is still so dramatically relevant to our world today that we're living in. Siege is incredible, and I really hope this is one that people genuinely take the time not only to explore, but to truly dive into, because Siege is potentially a banner release for Severin. This movie is incredible. And that's all I've got. That's my roundup for the month of August for some of the big boutique releases that I watched. Uh, I watched quite a few more, but these are just the big ones I wanted to highlight. Some good, some bad, some very much middle of the road type of movies, like I said. But overall, there's a lot that I recommend there. If you have any questions about any of these, let me know in the comments. Uh, lots of people that are watching these videos are still not subscribed. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. There's so much coming out recently. Um, I announced on my live stream this week that we're going to be doing this big watch along for the month of October. We're going to be going over... Uh, theme days that we're choosing next week and then we're going to compile a list of actual movies that as a group we're going to try to watch at least some of them and then discuss them all together and just go over some of our key takeaways and make this a, a genuine community that we're growing uh, through the month of October and beyond. There, there's lots of stuff that I have coming out soon. Um, I'm continuing my boutique labels series that I've been highlighting over the last couple of weeks. That next one will be coming out on Monday and so much more to come. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here for the last few months. As usual, for one collector, it's all of you. Have a good night.